Change your own play. Maybe dice psychic. You want to make it look cute. But we're not. We don't have to make. Just you don't like the stupid bow. Come on. All right. What's going on? Mike Sermon. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> I was gonna periscope last night, and then she wanted to talk. Syra likes to talk. Anyway, I'm gonna tell you why the special prosecutor is a bad idea. This goes against conventional wisdom, but hey, since when did I not go against conventional wisdom? It's kind of what I do. Hold on, I'm going to turn this overhead light off. See what a difference lighting makes? The images you see on television are not real. Lighting is everything. All right, so what's going on? What's going on? The prosecutor, the special prosecutor is a bad idea. I'm going to tell you why most people don't know. A little trivia. A little trivia about Mike Cernovich. Most people don't know, but you can confirm this. Mike Cernovich is a constitutional law scholar. You can look it up. During law school, I had done um, scholarship on constitutional law, and I was a research assistant for Douglas Kamek, who was the former assistant attorney general, office of legal counsel. This is also known as the attorney general's lawyer. So Doug Kamek must have been a common law professor. I was the only person in the history of his class to have 100 points in his common law exam. In fact, I actually got 103 on the exam because I answered issues he didn't even have on the law school exam. He didn't even realize it was there. So I got rounded down to 100. That's how tight my con law game is. My con law game, my con law game is so on point, they have to cut down my points to just to make me have a normal score. So why does this matter? I'll tell you why it matters. The special prosecutor stuff is a movie we've seen before, and I'm going to tell you why it's a bad idea. It, oh, do you want to sit up a little higher and hang out? How about I move my chair up? Hold on, we got to get Syra into position, guys. We got to get Syra. She wants to look, she likes to look at herself watch, while we talk. Whether, whether she's taken after Shauna or me, we'll leave that for other people. There you go. Oh, how's that? Okay. You happier now? You feel like you're more in the action? A little bit higher up. I think we're going to get her like a little, a little side chair to hang out with and talk more. Anyway, here's what happens with the special prosecutor. They're going to start subpoenaing people who are then going to have to hire their own lawyers. A special prosecutor bankrupts people. This is what people don't understand. So in theory, they go, oh, the special prosecutor is going to investigate corruption, and now it's great, and the media story is going to go away. No, what is going to happen is they're going to start investigating people. The special prosecutor might actually subpoena me because I was so effective last year, right? I've, I've been so effective, people don't believe that I'm just a guy. See, she's talking. Lock her up. Lock her up. So yeah, a lot of people, because I'm so effective, don't believe, don't believe I'm just a regular guy. Right? So if I'm investigated by a special prosecutor, I'm going to have to hire a lawyer. That's how they bleed you dry. Special prosecutors make it painful for anybody who is effective for Trump and anybody who's effective in journalism. What they'll do is they'll subpoena me, they'll subpoena other people, and then they'll make us have to hire lawyers and they'll bleed us dry. That's the game plan. So special prosecutors catastrophic. They did it to Ted Olson. They did it to Ted Olson back in Doug Comex's days. So this, again, has been played out. Bill Clinton, a lot of us don't like Bill Clinton. That's fine. I'm not here to talk about that. Bill Clinton, there was a special prosecutor to investigate him, right? So here's my question for you, my pop quiz for you. Is what Bill Clinton got impeached related to the subject matter of the special prosecution? I'll say that one more time. Was the, the Bill Clinton, what got him impeached, was that actually the subject matter of the special prosecutor's investigation? The answer to that is, there is a right answer. The answer to that is no. No. They can just start digging up all kinds of stuff. It was completely unrelated. So what got Bill Clinton, what got Bill Clinton had nothing to do with why the, prosecutor, the special prosecution was convened, Right? Well, the same thing is going to happen with Trump. They're going to dig into all kinds of things. It's a fishing expedition, exactly right. The special prosecutor is going to fish into Trump's life. They're going to fish into Roger Stone's life, everybody's life. And they're going to try to make our life miserable. That's the game plan. 
Thus, and again, this has happened before. This is why you never want to have a special prosecutor because they go on a fishing expedition and they try to make everybody's lives miserable. And I suspect, are you tired? You just spoke up. Yeah, dad, dad. You're saying dad, dad, but you got to say mama first. You got to say mom first. You don't want your first word to be dad, dad. Your first word has to be mom. Oh, do you want to get out of this swaddle or whatever? I, I know, I'll get you out of the swaddle thing. I don't know why mom overheats you like a little burrito. Oh, she was napping just now. Hold on, we'll get you out of the swaddle. Little Cyrus, she's in a little swaddle thing. She, she's like me, though. She's like her dad. She overheats. Too much brain activity. Whew. Oh, wow, you are overheating, kid. Too much brain activity. Special prosecutor is a bad idea. All right, moving on to the next. Moving on to the next point. There was another bombing in Syria. There was another bombing in Syria. So all the people who claimed that my story about McMaster's plan for a big war, they were wrong, weren't they, Cyra? All the haters claimed that I didn't know what I was talking about. All the haters claimed the good old dad didn't, didn't know what he was talking about. And there, there is another bombing, another airstrike in Syria. So apparently, apparently, oh, change and then I'll grab her. Yeah, she's fine. She's just hanging out. Yeah, she can talk. Here. What? Little red? Yeah. I need to go detox. I have toxins. I got to do the. Today I'm gonna do the far infrared saunas. Today we're gonna do far infrared sauna and cold therapy training. I went to a Wim Hof breathing seminar. Oh, by the way, guys, we're just talking. So if you come on, you know, you can ask me anything. This is more of an open channel kind of thing. It's not like a super serial, super serial thing. I am planning a big, big story today, a big mother of all stories. But I, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to hear back from, from some information. So if it, if it goes through either today or tomorrow, it's going to be an interesting day for sure. But if you want to just talk, hang out, you know, we can talk, just hang out. Thanks for the $2 super chat. That's right, we got super chat, bros. Super chat is enabled. So super chat allows you to sponsor independent media and journalism live. Or just the like button and subscribe, whatever. The loot's been coming in. I actually, it's kind of funny. You guys have been so generous that I have more loot than I, than I got to spend. I got like 50 grand sitting now in an um, escrow account because I don't spend it on myself. So, so many donations have come in that like I have projects they're going to do. So it's, it's great, you know, it's a great issue to have is now it's just about putting the money, putting the money to work. Definitely would be good. Joe Rogan does not think the earth is flat. Eddie Bravo does. Eddie Bravo does. No war, please. Yeah, I'm not real cool with that. Mueller was involved in the uranium deal with Podesta. I know. Podesta, Clinton, Podesta, Clinton. Who else? Who else? Yeah, Podesta, Clinton, Uranium, Beal, Mueller, they're all connected, guys. That's the whole point. They're all, they're all connected. It, it's just the way it is, man. The, the swamp is drowning Trump. Trump is drowning in the swamp. Th these airstrikes, were they even authorized by Trump? Were the Syrian airstrikes even authorized by Trump? I'm getting conflicting reports on that. So McMaster may have, even though he's not authorized to authorize their strikes because he's national security advisor, he's not an actual general. It's just the way it is, guys. We got more wars coming. More war is coming, and I don't know what else to tell you. The swamp is drowning Trump. Big personnel changes coming on this Monday, Tuesday. A lot of people are going to be out of a job. Hundreds of people are going to be out of a job. This is actually probably the most important story. Like, this is not a... The story that I broke yesterday isn't a sexy story, but it's probably the most important story I've written up. And there's a reason mainstream media hasn't picked it up. So the Susan Rice unmasking story, oh, that's salacious. It's very sexy. Yeah, I broke that. Isn't that cool? That's what I call, like, a cool guy story. It doesn't really move the needle, Right? It doesn't really, because we knew somebody unmasked it. The Susan Rice thing, although I got a lot of worldwide fame for it, to me, that isn't the kind of story I like to do. The story I did yesterday is the most important story I've done all year, which is that this Monday or Tuesday, 
something like 800 uh, Trump people are going to be out of a job. There was called Schedule C employees. They're temporary appointments, beachhead employees, call them what you will. And it's a temporary position. The term lasts 120 days, right? Monday or Tuesday, they're gone. Monday or Tuesday, they're gone unless their terms are extended by another 120 days or unless they go into permanent status. What I've also found out, and this is how corrupt it goes and how Trump is draining in the swamp, is you can't even get a White House internship if you're pro-Trump. Right, so let me let me just go through the thinking on that for a minute. I can understand a lot of people saying, "Oh, well, you can't just hire Trump supporters for the administration. You got to hire the best people, whatever that means." That I get a little bit. I kind I kind of get it. You can't get an intern though. Interns can't get in. So don't tell me don't tell me how is it that never Trumpers are getting the prestigious White House internships. For their never Trump people and their college Republicans, right? So you can't. So you can. You can maybe say, oh, maybe we don't know if Trump are the Trump supporters are the best people. Blah blah blah. They're okay, fine. We can argue at that point all day. It's an internship, bro. It's an internship. The only people who should be getting internships are pro-Trump people hire and pro-Trump young kids. That should be the only people because it's an internship. What is, interns are? It's just a resume thing for prestige. They don't actually do anything. Decent, right? It's just interns. So why is it that the pro-Trump people can't get their interns in? Why can't young college kids who are pro-Trump get those jobs? Why is it that the never-Trumpers are getting those prestigious internships? Right? So, that, so I'm breaking this story wide open, and I have a really big move planned for today. We're making a big move today. I can't tell you what it is. Or it might be tomorrow. Big move. Because I'm waiting on some, some info. But if I do this, this will be the number one story in the White House. Either today or tomorrow. But I'm waiting, you know, I'm waiting on some other intel. It will be major. Major. But may, not major in a Susan Rice way, but major in a way that I like to do. Because I like to do, like I said, personnel is policy. It, for most people, it isn't, it isn't that fun. Oh, what do you mean a person got hired or fired? The people who are being hired and fired, that's what really matters. Personnel is policy. That is what matters. Who is actually getting hired? Who is getting fired? That matters way more than the Susan Rice thing, right? But people find that the personnel moves boring. But the boring stuff, boring, God is in the details. If you want to find God, you got to be bored. This is true about anything. If you want to find God, however you define this, but I, I define God as pure knowledge, pure connection to the universe, to the world, to other people, to the future, to the past, to the present. Pure God is being infinitely connected in all directions, right? If you want to find God, you got to go in the details. If you want to find God, you got to be boring. Personnel stuff is boring. The people who are getting hired, that's very boring, trust me. Especially for somebody like me who's an idea person, not a per like I don't talk about people and gossip about people. I'm more of a big ideas kind of guy, philosophy. But you have to follow all these tedious little details about who's getting hired and who isn't. Peter Thiel's people are in town this week. They're raising hell because Peter Thiel's people can't get in. So does anybody want to tell me why Peter Thiel's people aren't getting hired? I'd really like to hear your explanation for that. We'll just open that question up. So Peter Thiel, brilliant entrepreneur, visionary, spoke at the Republican National Convention at great reputational harm. Trump needed Peter Thiel way more than Peter Thiel needed Trump. Let's just be real, right? Did Peter Thiel need to get involved in this election with Trump? Trump needed Thiel way more than Thiel needed Trump. So why aren't Thiel's people getting in? You go ahead and tell me that. I would love to hear why Peter Thiel's people aren't getting in. Johnny De Stefano, why does Johnny stay why does Johnny De Stefano have more clout than Peter Thiel? Did any of you heard of, hear of Johnny DeStefano during the election? Here's a question for you. Had any of you ever heard of Johnny DeStefano 
when Trump was running for office? Did he go to the Trump rallies? Did he get messages about Trump out? Was he on social media supporting Trump? Was he recruiting people for Trump? I never heard of Johnny De Stefano. So how then does Johnny De Stefano become the head of personnel and policy? Right? How does Johnny De Stefano get the most important job? Yeah, I don't know either, Syro. That's what we're trying to figure out. So how did you what do you think, Syra? Did you ever hear Johnny De Stefano? You never heard of him, did you? None of us did. So how did Johnny De Stefano get this important job? And how is Johnny De Stefano having more clout than Peter Thiel? Does that make any sense to you? I don't think so, right? Who should have more clout, Syra? Peter Thiel or Johnny De Stefano? You can think about that for a little bit, little bit, mull on, mull on a little bit, okay? So that's the question. That's what's going on. Trump is getting swooped, man. Trump is getting swooped, dude. What do you think, huh? Who should have more clout? Do you want to fly a little bit? Hold on. Do you want to fly a little bit? Okay. Whoa. Whoa. What are you looking at? You looking at that? Look up. That's you. That's you. You want to fly around? Yeah, so I want to know why Johnny De Stefano has all of this power and prestige more than Peter Thiel, right? Johnny De Stefano didn't do anything to get didn't do anything to get Trump elected. Right. So where is Johnny De Stefano? Nobody heard of him. Peter Thiel's getting skunked, getting outplayed by the deep state. Just the way it is, guys. She's he's getting outflanked by the deep state. Unbelievable. What else is going on, guys? We're just low key. Low key. No likes for old men. Holla lawyer. I don't know what that means. Hit the like button, I think he's saying. He was telling you to hit the like button. So I had an interesting conversation with Alex Jones. I'm going to open up a question for everybody here. Now, I know the haters of the world are going to claim that I'm turning on Trump. Wow, $100. Thanks, Ryan. Very generous of you. Very generous, Ryan. That will go to fun journalism. That would be good work. So question I have is, is the movement moving on from Trump? And I'll tell you why I'm asking what? that. I'll tell you why I'm asking that. No, I'm not anti-Trump. So if you're an idiot who isn't intelligent, then just leave. If you can't have a nuance, if you can't have a nuance, do you want to talk? What do you have to say, babe? What do you want to say? We're, we're about to have a talk. Do you have something to contribute? You're, yeah, you can. You can contribute. What's on your mind? You don't know? Yeah, okay. So... The question is, has the movement moved on from Trump? And again, I'm not anti-Trump. I'm not turning against Trump. But as a journalist, it's my job to ask questions and to, to get the opinion of the people. So here's what I'll tell you that I've noticed. Whoa, hey, watch your head. She is like a kamikaze now. This kid, what are you, are you getting hungry or what? Oh, what are you doing? You want to look at the books? So yeah, I'll tell you what I've noticed. So I, I, I noticed that when I, was, I hosted the Deplorable, that it was all about, like, it became like a Trump event, right? Everybody, everybody at the Deplorable was all about Trump. And then I held an event called the Bull Moose Party, which was kind of a Trump event too. And people were still all about Trump, but less so. The last time I was in Washington, D.C. was for Jim Hoff's event, The Real News Party. And you know what everybody asked me? You know what everybody asked me at the Bull Moose or at the, the Real News Party? They didn't ask me about Trump. They said, hey, so what are we going to do from here? What's the movement going to do? Well, you know, what are you gonna... So the people, they still like Trump, don't get me wrong. Nobody is anti-Trump, but the conversation wasn't how can we help Trump. The conversation was, hey, so what are we going to do next? Because the vibe I was getting is that we're not getting what we should be getting out of Trump. It's just the reality. Oh, uh, you okay? It's okay? She's teething a lot of, you know. There you go. You okay? You just a little coughing? So that's what a lot of people have been saying is, what, you know, what are we going to do? Which is a... Com 
Yeah, yeah. Well, what are we going to do, Syrah? Are we going to go back to D.C. in a couple weeks? Are you going to travel with me this time? People want to meet you. Whenever we have an event, people want to meet Syrah. It's pretty funny. They're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, Syrah. She's not going to go to Shelly's Cigar Lounge. Well, she won't go to Cigar Lounge, but you know, we can go to a park or something. Are you going somewhere? Hi. Uh, my mom wants to see her. Right, I need to get my car today, too. Okay. So you can just you can take her to your mom. Okay, and then you can... I'll walk over, and then we'll go get my car. Okay. And then we get a poke bowl. Okay. I'm hungry. Okay. Um, hold up for a sec. I'm going to put this... In the, I'm, I'm just going to drive over there. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, say goodbye to Syra. Syra's going to go see Grandma. What do you think, Syra? What is going to happen? Has Is the movement, you know... The, yeah? Yeah? What are you thinking? Say goodbye. Yeah. Say goodbye to the people. <laughs> Say goodbye. You're going to go hang out with Grandma. Uh-huh. She ought to put the flower on her head. What do you think? Thank you, Mike, for the super chat. What do you think? Hmm? What is on your mind? What do you, you want to grab my, oh, she wants to grab everything. Yeah, she's a grabber now, so I was eating a salad. She's strong, too. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you her grip. She's got good grip. Here, here you go. You're going to grab a finger for me, or you're going to, of course, you're going to do what Julius does, right? You're going to do what Julius does. The minute, the minute I give you something to grab, you're not going to grab it. Here, you want to grab that? Thanks, Christopher. There you go. You want to grab it? There she goes. She's got, so will she break my, my, no, 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 no. You don't want to eat those, okay? You can grab them. We don't want you do you know how much germs are on there? No, no, no. You can't do that. You can't do that. We'll give you something else. So, yeah, she's grabby. She likes to grab everything. Necklaces, hair, the whole thing. It's a lot of fun, though. She's smart. She's going to be talking soon. She's five, five and a half months, I think. I don't know. Oh, my God. You don't know her birthday? I know her birthday, December 6th. But I don't know how many months that is because life moves so fast that I don't even know what day it is, what month it is. For example, this event we had, oh, okay, you feel all right? All right. For example, you know, Jack Posobiec tweeted out that the deplorable, about the deplorable. Wow, thank you, Michael, very generous. So Jack Posobiec, um, so, yeah, so Jack Posobiec tweeted out that, you know, because Sheriff Clark, if Sheriff Clark was going to be made Department of Homeland Security, Sheriff Clark actually came to the deplorable, right? So Sheriff Clark actually, actually came to the deplorable. And that's pretty cool to think about. You know, that's the kind of people who come to my events, which is why I can't let morons, morons in. But then I thought about it. I was like, dude, inauguration has only been five months. Our whole What's up? I know time flies, babe. What are you thinking? What do you want? You want to grab my coffee, but you'll spill it everywhere. You can't do that, okay? You can't do it. Thanks, John, for the 10. So Cyrus is going to be talking soon, I think, because she is very vocal. Yeah. Say, say, here, what are you going to want to say? We want you to say, mm-hmm. Say lock her up. Say Hillary for prison. Oh, almost Hillary for prison. Should we put Hillary? In, should Hillary Clinton be in prison? Maybe. Yeah, she's getting there. Lock her up. So lock lock her up. Yeah, she's. We're talking. We're working on her vocal exercise. So we have a rule. By the way, no baby talk allowed around Syra. So we have pretty. We have pretty strict rules, and by we meaning me. So no baby talk is allowed to Syra. You have to talk to her like she's a fully formed human being, right? So nobody can go goo goo ga ga. No goo goo ga ga around Syra at all. That's why she's going to talk soon. She spends hours a day listening to me jabber on about everything. That's why she's already trying to talk. So no baby talk. I talk to her like a normal person. Exactly. And then another, here's another kind of trick I do with her. So in the morning, so what I do is I, I commit to spending 20 minutes with her in the mornings without doing any, you know, without being distracted. And then what I do is I narrate what is happening. So here's, here's, I'll tell you a little parenting trick. So here's right now, I'll say, hey, Syrah, I'll just watch you. This is what we do. I go, I go, hey, Syrah. 
Did you hear your mom? Your mom is downstairs. She's downstairs in the kitchen. Do you know what a kitchen is? A kitchen? Yeah, she's downstairs in the kitchen putting dishes away. So I do that. I do that all the time. I narrate for her what is happening because that's how you teach them vocabulary. So today I was saying, oh, do you hear your mom? Your mom is upstairs. She's making noise. That's why she's so talkative because all day, all day we just kind of talk. And you do the narration. So you say, oh, hey, Syra. Right now you're, you know. Exactly. Right now there's a, that's a funk. Exactly. So she's very talkative because we talk to her, we talk all the time and I narrate what is happening. Very important to, to narrate what is happening. So then we'll say, see that? That's your mom. Hi, sweetheart. That's your mom right there. You uh -huh. see her? Are you ready? Do you want to go hang out with your mom? You want to say bye-bye to the people? Okay, you want to go hang out with your mama? Okay. Say, uh, see, she wants her mom. There you go. Babe, do you have that car key? Oh, yes, yeah, right here. Oh, wow. She, you guys are a lethal combination. Yeah, how so? She is so hot right now. I know, we cook, man. Our bodies run hot. Dude, that big brain. Big brain. So, yeah, that is, um, it's a lot of fun. So somebody goes, your kid is like every other kid. There's always very negative, nasty people. You know, we always block them. You know, that's the, the thing about existence is you always have these nasty people who weren't very good parents and their own children maybe aren't, you know, where they should be in life. And because of that, they just want to you know, lash out. Very, very sad, unfortunately. But my advice to people would be to, to, to take care of your children rather than, you know, attack me and attack my children. It would be, be a good parent. Yeah. And it's not like I'm bragging. I'm just talking about what I do. It may come as a surprise to newcomers, but I just talk about what I do. I talk about what I'm interested in. A lot of people, for example, have said, hey, Cernovich, how did you go from writing about relationships and I did a good interview with Brittany Pettibone so Brittany Pettibone she has a YouTube channel nice person friend of mine I did a, a YouTube um, interview with her I don't know if that's up yet but she you know she goes well how did you go from where you were to where you are and the answer is all I do is write about and talk about what I'm doing in my life I don't do anything for show. Everything is just here I am. This is what I'm into. This is what I'm going to do. So if you look back to my old, if you look back to my old pictures, like I traveled a lot and I was in Vietnam, Thailand and everything. And now I'm just like a dad, right? I was a bro at pool parties. So there's pictures of me at pool parties surrounded by, you know, hot chicks and whatever. That was what I was into. And then I got into the writing and the journalism and now the commentary and everything. So there's no, there's, there's no act. This is who I am. It's reality news. That's the whole point. This is just a window. This is just a window kind of into my life and, and a window into what I'm up to. That's all it is. That, and that's what people like. Yeah, I mean, you can find some pics of me pretty jacked. I'm definitely, you know. And I was very open about, you know, what I used to look that way, Right. I was, you know, you can find pictures of me, you know, I look all right now. I'm not like nasty or anything, but I don't look the way I used to look. And I was very open about how I was able to achieve that look because I'm not going to lie to people. I never lied about people and said, oh yeah, I just took creatine, right? Because I'm never going to lie to your face. I even told people, people go, oh, but you're probably on all kinds of whatever. And I was like, yeah, I was, I was, so what, right? I don't, that's the thing. People are so tired of lies. People are tired of being lied to about everything, right? Just lied to about what you're doing, your background, your past. I'm not into that, man. I don't, I don't need to be on Fox News, right? I've said enough things that I'll never be mainstream, right? But the thing is, I don't care. I would rather have authentic interaction with real people than have fake interaction. What am I going to do? Get more money? You know, I make enough money. That's the whole thing. I can make way... Look. What I do... Could you imagine if I wanted to sell commercial real estate or something? Right? That's why I always laugh about people. People go, oh, you're just in this for the money. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Can you imagine if I took my sales abilities and my marketing abilities and my persuasion abilities 
and I sold real estate or got into commercial real estate or got into like high margin products. Could you imagine, right? There is no, there's no money in this. I do this because I believe in my country and I believe in making the world a better place. It's the only reason, only reason I do it. Yeah, I could, believe me, I could be doing way, way more. This is the worst way in the world to make a living, unless you really are passionate about it. Mike, do I have an update on Cerno Films? Yeah, I posted the trailer for Hoax. So I have, I have my two directors, and so the way I'm gonna work it, so I showed the, I showed the trailer the other day, and so I showed the trailer the other day. So I'm getting, I have two people and they're gonna co-direct, which could lead to some drama. No offense, but you gloat too much. Well, then just leave, bro. Just, just get out of here, dude. So I'll have two directors shooting and doing other things, but I'll be the arbitrator. So I will have final creative control. That's the only, the only way that I'm gonna do another film. I have to have final creative control because, I mean, let's just face it, I'm a good, I'm a, a great storyteller. I'm an effective storyteller, uh, but I need people with the technical skills and the ability to tell a story visually. What about the recut of Silence? I haven't decided on that yet. So, Silence is going to be recut. Silence is um, going to be recut. And... Because I want to do that right away. You just pledged on Patreon. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, silence is going to be recut, and so yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm this year. I'm gonna here. I mean, I'll tell you what I have planned for this year. Silence is going to be recut, producers cut, and I'm going to give everybody on Kickstarter a free copy of that. Everybody who Kickstarter silenced on that. So we're going to recut silence and. We're also going to do a brand new documentary hoax. And I'm going to write a book. And I'm going to get my book out. So we are, we are busy. We are definitely, we are definitely busy. And I'm going to keep breaking news and doing journalism and everything else. Still waiting for the DVD. Those are shipping out, my friend. There were some issues that I'm not going to go into, but... If you look around, you can see that I had quite a bit of drama with the film. And I didn't make the drama public because it would not have advanced the goal. So, but if, you know, people have been asking, there was a lot of things went behind the scenes and I just had to charge it to the game and I just had to take deal with it. I had to deal with people bashing me, lying about me, committing fraud about me, claiming all kinds of things and I just had to get, them, get it done, man. Just the way it is, dude. So yeah, I had a Kickstarter for Silenced, and so a lot of people, you know, you didn't follow me back then, but I had a Kickstarter for Silenced, and it did 838 backers pledged $71,000. So that was pretty cool, right? So last year, last year I did a crowdfund for Silenced, and we did 838 backers, and... We raised $71,000, and then I had money come in after the gate. So we actually raised $80,000 for Silenced. And I threw, and I didn't take any money for it. I paid my director way more than he was worth, but that's just the way it is. Um, you know, that's just the way, the way it is. I didn't take a producer's cut, and then I put fifteen grand of my own money into it to make it happen. And now we're gonna roll the money, and so now we're selling it. We've had like ten, we've had some small amounts, some trivial amount, like ten grand come in. I'm gonna roll that into the next film, and then I'm gonna roll in some donations I had to Hoax, and then I'll do another Kickstarter for Hoax. So as soon as the side, the, the plan is once because I don't feel right doing another Kickstarter until everybody has all their posters and their DVDs and everything. So and again, that was my fault. There was drama. There's an excuse. I have a lot of excuses, but that's not very guerrilla mindset. I own it. Things happened, and you know what? That's just the way it is. But your DVDs and your posters and everything. The film got made. Film got made. It's a good film. Film is out. Which 99% of films on Kickstarter don't even get made. 
So yeah, the film the film got made. It's done, released, distributed. We're waiting to find out if it'll be on Netflix. And then logistically, we have some problems, but that's all going to be done. Could have been better. That's why we're going to recut it. I did not have creative control over Silenced. Why? Because I had a guy have a meltdown and say, here's the DVD, we can just go our separate ways. After I had paid him $80,000, he quit, he's just gonna rage quit because I wanted you know, to do some improvements. So my director was gonna rage quit on me, then I wouldn't have a film, and then I would be like every other asshole who does a Kickstarter and doesn't deliver. Right? I would be like every other loser who does a Kickstarter and they don't get the film shipped. So I just had to take it. I just had to take it and that's just the way it is. So I, I had to put my ego aside for the greater good of the project, for the greater good of, of succeeding. Definitely, you know, it's just, that's how it is. Sometimes in life you got to put your ego aside to make it happen. But in life you also have to learn from your mistakes. You have to learn from your mistakes and one of those mistakes I learned is, you know, I'm going to have creative control over the film. The end. 100% final decision. If I don't like it, then the people I work with have to realize the people I'm working And I have two great people now. And I've told them, I go, just so you know, just so you know, I give you a lot of creative freedom and I'm not going to micromanage you. But when I say I want something done a certain way, just don't argue with me. Right, that's kind of like the way. That's kind of the way I look at it. Is which is, you know, my directors. I I want to give them great creative control and not mess with them too much. But when I do want something done, I don't want argument. Oh, da, 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 da. no, just hey, look. I, I, if I'm giving you a lot of freedom, creative control, that's great. But that means you have to, you know, not be in your own head that you're an artistic genius. Oh, that's another thing I'll never do. Here's life advice. Do you know, you know what kind of people call themselves creative geniuses? Anybody who ever calls himself or herself a creative genius go far away. Why? Because they're losers who have never had any true success. And because of that, to preserve their ego, they have to say, well, I'm such a genius that people can't comprehend it. Right? They have to just say, oh, no, look, if you're that good, people know you're that good. Right, my book Gorilla Mindset on Audible has 963 ratings. On Amazon, it has over a thousand reviews between all the stores. I don't have to say Gorilla Mindset is the best mindset book ever written. I can show you all the reviews. They're all there, man. All there, thousands of reviews across uh, Apple and Amazon. Over 2,000 reviews between Audible, Apple, Amazon. You know, I don't have to tell people I'm a great writer. Like, okay, people can figure that out. So if, if people have to run their mouths all the time about how they're geniuses, it's because they failed at life. And that is the way, that is the way they preserve their ego, which is very sad. No, there was a bomb, a Syria bomb today. Why does Bill, oh, I don't care, guys. The Bill stuff, I don't care about, guys. You gotta realize I only you I only do drama when it promotes promotes a cause. And Bill tried to have a civil war with me and all he did was lost thousands of Twitter followers. Right? So I live in the world of analytics, I live in the world of so here if you can go to socialblade.com, go to socialblade.com and pull up Mike Cernovich. Go to my Twitter account. So I have picked up 15,000 new followers in the past month, all right? Yesterday I did 1,000, the day before 977, the day before 929, the day before that 586, 474, 300, 749, 959, right? So, so I'm, I'm on the rise, right? Now let's go see, you know, the guy who's calling me fake news. Let's just check in, check in on him. Mr. You know, Mr. I want to try to make my reputation by bashing Cernovich. How is how is he doing? This is all you know good. So he has picked up 6,700 people in the past month. So not only do I have more followers on Twitter, 
Not only do I have a much larger following on Twitter, but I'm actually growing at a faster rate. So one, I have more of a following, and two is I'm growing at a faster rate. That really says it all. So what, what do I gain by what do I gain by talking about that guy? Long Cernovich, short other people. What do I attribute my popularity to? Long, 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 long days. <laughs> I, wish, I wish that I had a better answer for you. Long days. A lot of people go, Cernovich, you look tired today. Some days, you're, I'm like, yeah, you're right, I'm tired. You're right. Long days, man. You do a lot of long days and do long days long enough and you'll be all right. But that's the only key. Work a lot of hours, really, really hard, and then you'll, then you'll do whatever you want in life. On a long enough timeline, if you keep showing up, because there is a lot of luck involved in life. So a lot, work long enough, work hard enough, and eventually you'll hit it big. But it might take you 10, 15 years. And you're gonna have a lot of adversity you're going to have a Mike show up game is on point. Exactly. I show up, guys, every day. And you're going to have a lot of adversity along the way, man. There's really no, you know, I have definitely more, I have more adversity. I have more adversity coming my way. That's for sure. I definitely have more hits coming my way. And you just got to realize that there's so much power in life of, you just gotta push through, man. How to stay motivated with a chronic illness. I don't know, I mean, let me show you some pictures, dude. Let me. Mm -hmm. How do you stay motivated? Well, I don't, what does Mike Cernovich know about? What does Mike Cernovich know about chronic illness? Because I probably live a perfect life. Beautiful daughter, hot wife, money in my pockets, probably, you know? Probably just I lived a, a beautiful life, right? Probably never had, probably had never had any real problems, right? Just charmed life. Charmed life. This was me, like not that long ago. That is not a that is not a sunburn. That is a chronic condition called red skin syndrome. So during a skin flare, I couldn't get out of bed. Couldn't get out of bed. Look at that, dude. Show, look at that, dude. That was my chest, bro. Skin. That was my chest. It was like some kind of weird, that was me. So you can go, you know, that was me, guys. You think I, you think I had a good life, man? You think it's been easy for old Mike Cernovich? Look, dude, yeah, horrific. Horrific. So how do you stay motivated, man? What are you gonna what else are you gonna do, man? Here's what I always tell people. What else are you gonna do in life? You're gonna whether you're sick or healthy or you feel good or you don't feel good, you're gonna be here. You're gonna be here. So you might as well make the most of it. You might as well do what you wanna do. Right? It's really as simple as that. And honest to God is that simple. There really is no other choice but to stay motivated because your problems aren't gonna go away. Your health problems aren't gonna go away. Your love problems aren't gonna go away. Whatever your problems are, they're still gonna be there and you're still gonna be there with them. So you have to choose, do you still wanna live the best life that you can live? Right, it's all mindset, guerrilla mindset. So read guerrilla mindset, that'll teach you how to stay motivated. Do I think, what do you guys think about Milo coming back? What's your opinion on the Milo comeback? So I'm gonna ask you some questions. What is your opinion on the Milo comeback? So I'm reading right now. A lot of pessimism actually. Definitely a lot of pet. That's interesting. How it's interesting. So there. That's you know. That's good. 
that's good market um, research, really, for him. I would definitely, definitely, you know, there's, because I would expect, interesting, interesting, interesting. So there's a lot of pessimism. So that would show, so the, the the Milo should read that the comments and then really make sure he comes back in a big way. That's my take on Milo. My hate on Milo is that he has to come back big. Really big with something substantive. Right? He has to come back big with something substantive. Because here's what happened with Milo. And Milo's a friend of mine. I'm not throwing shade. I think very, you know, I was, I've had Milo's back through everything. I've never turned my back on Milo. I've never backstabbed him. Okay. Milo is a brilliant speaker, brilliant writer. And he's good looking and he's gay. So he's got these attributes going on. Somewhere along the, the, the way, rather than say, hey, I'm a public speaker and I'm a public intellectual, who is gay and good looking, he tried to take the model aspect and make that his whole persona, right? So instead of saying, I'm gonna use the, the physical attributes I have and the look and the style that I have to advance the intellectual goals and the intellectual talents, he quit focusing on the intellectual and focused on the, the glamour aspect. So for Milo to come back big, for Milo to come back big, he's got to return to the speaking, the debating, the writing, the, the grind. He's definitely got to do the grind. And then he'll come back bigger than ever. So if Milo, if Milo returns to the public intellectual ability that he has, he'll come back three times bigger. He'll come back bigger than ever. But if all he wants to do is focus on the glamour stuff, that's hard to do because, I mean, think of even a pop star other than Kim Kardashian, who has no talent other than she's famous for being famous. That is, you know, that's almost not going to be the true case of anybody. Think about Madonna. Madonna is on the grind. Madonna is a pop star. She has musical talent. Mariah Carey. People put up with Mariah Carey because she has amazing vocal talent. Right? So, Lady Gaga has talent. So, Milo has major league talent. Milo is a once in a generation talent. Milo has charisma, intelligence, ferocity, attractiveness, style. He's a once in a generation talent. However, he has to focus on the substance, right? He has to use the glamour and the glitz to draw attention to the talent. But if you only become about glamour and glitz, that's going to be very, very, very hard to do. So as long as Milo returns to substance, reminds people who he is, reminds people the intellectual ability he has, he's going to come back bigger than ever. But he's got to get back on the grind. Because the thing about Milo is he worked hard. I don't know what he's been up to lately. But Milo was on the grind. And Milo hit all of that. Milo, because the, the, traditional, the traditional view is that you should never tell people how hard you work. You want to make it look easy. That's kind of how you manage your brand as a celebrity brand, right? But when I was up in Alaska with Pizza Party Ben and Milo was up there, Ben and I hung out and Milo could barely hang out. He, we had lunch a couple times and a dinner, you know, but he worked 13 hours a day. That is what nobody ever saw about Milo is that he was working 13 hours a day, writing, editing, really trying to get these senses just right, managing people. He was on the grind hard, right? And then he had the looks thing, the glitz, but that was all people saw. They didn't see the grind. So what we need Milo to do is to get back on the speaking tour, get back on the writing grind, get them articles back out, get that original content out. We need to see more streams and use the glitz to advance the substance. That's the key. Use glamour, shock and awe, glitz 
to advance the self because he has it. He has all the talent. He has all the talent he needs to do it. Guy's brilliant. And he is charismatic. So he has to return to his... So for example, the Today Show... The Today Show was what we need more from Milo. Have you watched the Milo Today Show interview, the full interview? That's what we need from Milo. The charm with the aggression. Oh, you don't really believe that. Oh, come on. These, right? He needs to keep people in his wheelhouse. Right? And then I'll tell you another thing he needs to do. I'll tell you, because I've, I've talked to a lot of people about it. He's got to realize he is an overdog. That was, I. by the way, nothing I'm saying, I'm not shading Milo. You know me. I'm, I've had this guy's back through everything. And I've told him this multiple times. I said, Milo, you fight like an underdog. You are an overdog now. The rules change. When you're, when you're coming up, you can be mean and nasty to people. No problem. But when you become the overdog, people expect you to have more graciousness with people. You can't take the kind of shots of people you used to. That's why a lot of people go, Cernovich, you know, you don't troll people like you used to. Of course not. I'm the overdog now. Right? I'm world famous, known worldwide, recognized in public every day I go out. So I can't take cheap shots of people like I used to. That could, why? Because that is persuasion in human psychology. Because then you look like a bully. Right? I can go after big targets. I can go after Ma Maggie Haberman. I can go after Glenn Thrush. I can go after media people. But I just can't pick random marginalized groups of people and be mean to them. That is how you lose the crowd. Because what you got to under, there's a concept called losing the crowd, which is a, a, it's a, a persuasion concept. And losing the crowd is that the crowd controls you as much as you control a crowd. Right? Everybody wants to believe, oh my God, all these people follow me, they love me, they adore me, I'm the greatest. Well, they might. They might. Believe me. They might. But the crowd can turn against you too. And the nature of crowd is energy. So you have to watch the energy of the crowd. How is the crowd feeling with the vibe of the crowd? So if you're, if you're going after, if I went after kind of no-name people, I would lose the crowd. I would a lot I could go after no name people and 10 20 percent of people would think it was great but the the overall vibe of the crowd would be like God Milo's you know this or Cernovich is too big you can't go after those people so you have to you have to watch the vibe of a crowd and then say okay like real change so I'll give you an example a, a concrete example Milo was on the Joe Rogan podcast and I was talking to some people who watched it and they go, and these are more liberal people. And they said, yeah, man, I was watching Milo on the Joe Rogan podcast. And I was watching it with my fiance. And we were watching, and we're thinking like, yeah, man, we agree with this guy. We agree with this guy. We agree with this guy. We're, and then Milo, and, he, and this is what I'm reporting what people told me. They go, and then he said, oh, yeah, transgender people should just kill themselves. And they go, that then is like, that is when we just thought that was malicious. And we just, he lost us there, right? So with stuff like that, because here's my position on transgender people. I think it is a mental disorder, and I think these people deserve compassion. I don't think anybody, schizophrenic, bipolar, depressed people, I don't, I don't think anybody should commit suicide unless maybe it's like a chronic pain condition and there's no way out of it and everything else, right? I believe that we should be compassionate to transgender people. I think it's hard enough for them as it is, right? I think it's a body dysmorphic condition is hard enough as it is, you know, so we don't need, we don't need to make it harder for them. doesn't mean we have to, you know, recognize all 55 gender pronouns, but I, I'll, I'll call people whatever gender they want me to call them. That's just my personal view. But the bigger point is, so Milo is winning over this big crowd, winning over this big crowd. And then if you say something like, oh, just kill yourself, that's glib. You can't be glib when you're an overdog. And that's another reason um, a lot of conservative ideas fail. They go, oh, you have cancer? This isn't Milo. I'm just saying conservatives. The rule is you can't be glib. If you want to take big principle, big principle is if you're an overdog, you can't be glib about human suffering. This is a rule of persuasion. Cerno's rule of persuasion. Overdogs can't be glib about human suffering. That is a rule that goes all the way back to our DNA because the idea is if you're a big, strong guy or you have a big crowd or a big following, 
then you have abundance and you have to have a certain graciousness, a certain nobility to you, a certain recognition that you owe duties to the people. This is the way people, this is the way people believe. I'm not saying what people should or shouldn't do. I'm just telling you this is an iron rule of persuasion is that powerful people cannot be glib about human suffering. So what happens with conservatives is they will say, they'll go, oh, you got sick. You should have saved up for health insurance. Wait a minute. So we got somebody with cancer and that's your answer to that? You should have saved up money to pay for your cancer surgery? That is why conservatives lose. That is so glib to human suffering. You have a human being going through a major crisis. They have a health problem. They have cancer. They wonder if they're going to die. Are they going to plead bankruptcy? What is really going to go on? This is, this is human suffering, man. And your answer to that is say, oh, you should have saved more money? Get the fuck out of here, right? That's really what it comes. That's my perspective on the, why I don't like conservatives is just get, the, get out of here with that. These are real people with real problems. And your answer to that is, oh, you should have saved more money in case you got cancer. That maybe could be a father who maybe can't pay the bills or his kid's going to be homeless. There's just no, there's no sympathy or compassion for people. It's just being glib about human suffering. And you can't do that. You can't do that. You cannot be, even if you don't like people, you better, you better fake it good. Even if you... Even if you don't care if people are going to die of cancer because they can't afford their bills, you better, you better pretend because you're going to lose the crowd really fast. I think we should have compassion for people. We definitely should. But if you're a sociopath and you don't have compassion, you can't act that way. You have to show actual, you have to show actual compassion for people one way or another. And that's why conservatives lose a lot of things. So kind of looping that back to, to Milo and then we'll move on to other subjects is that Milo is now an overdog. He is not the underdog. He's got the power, the wealth, the image, the money, the following. When you have that, you have to develop much more of a graciousness. That doesn't mean cuck. I don't think anybody is going to accuse me of going soft. I don't think there's anybody who goes, oh, wow, Cernovich boy, he used to be good, but now he's just afraid to take on anybody. No, that isn't the point. That's not the point. The point is you have to pick on bigger targets, right? Christian Bale. For, by the way, hit the like button. If you want me to keep talking about this, hit the like button. If you, if you want me to keep going, hit the like button. If you're bored, then we'll go. So I'll, gi I'll give you an example. Christian Bale is obsessed with me. Sam Harris is obsessed with me. So I can still be ruthless, but I got to go after Christian Bale and Sam Harris. I can't say, oh, there's one guy with 10 people following him, calling me a name. I'm going to put that guy on blast before the whole world. That is not being gracious. But I can go after Christian Bale. I can go after Sam Harris. I can go after any, any of the big dogs, right? So that's the thing with Milo is he's got to go after the big dogs. He's got to realize he is way bigger than he believes and way more powerful than he believes. So you can't be going after people below you. You have to fight, punch hard. Go after the Lena Dunhams, the Amy Schumers, the Sam Harrises, right? The, the Christian Bales. Those are the people you go after. You don't go after nobodies or marginal people. So that's my take on that. So long story short, my final word on Milo. If Milo comes back focusing on substance, he is going to come back bigger than ever. He's got to come back, though. And he's got to focus on what he's good at, the public intellectual. So if he comes back as a public intellectual, he'll be bigger than ever. He might be the biggest, biggest guy ever. That's the whole thing is he, he's, again, a once-in-a-generation talent. There's nobody Milo's age who has that level of talent that he has. In his generation, nobody's got that level. What he does now, though, it's all on him. What else you want to talk about? Go ahead. We're just doing open hour. This is like office hours. She's hanging out. It's like, think of me as a college professor. And I've just got the office open and, you know, people can come in and, you know, we can just talk about whatever. 
Thoughts on Julian Assange? Uh, I don't know. Can you learn the attributes Milo has? You can learn persuasion, sure. There, there. You can, you can definitely learn persuasion. Charisma. You can learn charisma. It just takes a lot of time. I learned charisma. What do I think of Gingrich as chief of, of chief of staff? I'm pro. I'm definitely pro. Mike is Peter Teal, a great speaker. So Teal does a lot of pregnant pauses when he's thinking. So we could definitely. He's a he's a good public speaker for sure. But we could definitely coach him, and he would be even better. Please, he, 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 we can all prove. We can all prove. Is RT a reliable news source about America? Yeah, what they're talking about Russia. So the thing that the Russians learned, which is a genius, is that tell the truth about America, and then you can, you know, maybe not tell the truth about Russia to build credibility. So I would trust RT more than CNN when it comes to America affairs. So if I actually wanted to know the truth about what's happening in America, I trust RT, which used to be called Russia Today. I trust RT more than CNN for what is happening in America. As for what's happening in Russia, I don't trust any. I don't trust, I don't trust CNN, RT, NY Times. I don't trust anybody about what is actually happening in Russia. But as to what's happening in America, I trust RT more than CNN, definitely. Times Square, any word? I don't know, actually. I haven't heard. They're saying that it was a drunk driver. But that's kind of weird. Um, he was a drunk driver at noon, New York time, and he dr drove into Times Square. And then the pictures of him showed him in like a rage thing. So I'm not really buying the official story just yet. I'm, I'm definitely waiting. I'm definitely waiting to see what... See what I think about there. So I'm, I'm withholding. I'm withholding judgment for sure. But it's weird to think that he is a drunk. Here, I'll show you a picture of the guy. It's weird that he's a drunk driver at noon. And then when I, let me show you the picture of the guy. This is like Pulitzer worthy. So there's the car in the background. That's the driver I'm hearing. So that's the driver somewhere. So I, I'm not really, you know, I'm suspicious. So that doesn't look to me like a drunk driver. That looks to me like a terrorist. That looks to me like somebody who is definitely, you know, committed a terrorist act. That doesn't look like a drunk driver to me. Right? So, and he drove three blocks onto the sidewalk. Look, I mean, look at that image, right? That's the face of a murderer. That isn't the face of a drunk driver. That's the face of a killer right there. So that's him. And so I'm suspicious, man. That to me looks like a mass murderer. So I'm not buying this whole thing, oh, it's just a, an accident. I mean, look, dude, look at the carnage. He, have you guys ever been to Times Square? Have you guys ever been to Times Square and noticed um, how hard it is? To, there's things, uh, blockers everywhere, right? So that, I mean, look at that. Does that look like a drunk driver? That would be my question to you is, does that look like a drunk driver to you? That looks like a homicidal maniac. That looks like a murderer, a homicidal maniac. So I'm definitely not buying the official story that this was a D, just a DUI, random drunk driver guy at noon. Too many, too many unanswered questions first. Too many, too many unanswered questions first. Okay, so there's going to be a new Reddit called The New Right. So I was messaged, do you want to be a celeb mod for the new subreddit? Okay, so we're, we're working on that. We're, we're definitely, okay, so yeah, I'll help, I'll help promote that. So they're doing, you know, the Donald, you know, the Donald is, I don't know what's really going on. Um, I, I wish Donald the best of luck though. 
What else is going on? Cartels. Yeah, the cartels are a problem for sure. Yes, I don't know, man. I'm not buying. I'm not buying this drunk driver story. Does not look like a drunk driver to me. That that's the whole point. I'm just gonna say, does not look like a drunk driver to me. Yeah, I don't think he is. I don't know. What days are you on InfoWars? I was supposed to be on InfoWars on Friday. Okay? Friday at noon, I think. Yeah, Friday at noon Pacific Standard Time, I think. Or 1. They've been rescheduling me to Wednesday, which I think is better for me anyway, but we'll see. But Alex is talking about doing a full three-hour show around me. He wants me to do a, uh, a three-hour show, like full-time gig. And, you know, that I'm going to be, that I'm going to be curious about. So I'm not really, and Alex is persuasive guy. Alex is assuming the sale. Every time I, every time I guest host, every time I guest host, he Says, oh yeah, in a month we're going to have a three-hour show. So Alex is a persuasive guy. He assumes the sale. So every time I guest host and Alex Jones says, oh yeah, and then in like another month, Cernovich is going to have a full three-hour show, da 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 I'm like, wow, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I haven't signed on the line that is dotted just yet, right? But I, um, Alex is definitely an alpha male for sure. And he's a boss in that regard. Thanks, Alex. We got another super chat in. The nonsense protest at the FCC today reported by Jack Posobiec showed statements about net neutrality and censoring Infowars. Not going to happen. Edge providers regulated by the FTC. Yeah, th th this is an important issue, guys. There, there are a lot of important issues that aren't really getting a lot of attention. The FTC, FTC, FCC kind of appointments. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of things not there's a lot of things not getting not not getting out there for sure. The FTC refo oh I have some news about Fox News too. Man, we got a lot of we got a lot of news we're breaking. Gosh, can't keep truck keep up. I definitely I need to hire some another staff writer, I think. Definitely need to hire a staff writer. We're, we're expanding. But I don't like to manage people, it's the thing. I don't like to manage people. I like people who are self-starters and everything. We're working on it. Okay. Okay. So, what do we got going on? Oh, wow. Okay. Amazing. So, okay. all right. So, there's going to be a new Reddit. I'll be announcing soon. There's going to be a new subreddit. New subreddit. What else is going on? Gavin banned from DePaul. I haven't seen that yet. Let's go. Let's go check on Gavin's. Um, let's go check Gavin's timeline. Gavin DePaul rescinds Gavin McInnes's invitation to speak. Okay, so Gavin McInnes has been banned. Has been banned from DePaul. Not surprised. Definitely not a surprise. That's another breaking news story. Why not start a new vote subreddit? Vote is going to go out of business unless they get some um, angel investing or reader support or something. What else is going on, guys? Do you hear lawnmower? Yes, you do. The lawnmower, the lawnmower is going hand. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. This super chat is pretty cool. 
Super Chat loot. We got three $100 Super Chats. Pretty cool. Thank you very much. That's actually really cool. So yeah, right now we have three, we have three Super Chat loots, 300 bucks. Plus we have some other loot come in. So that's pretty good, dude. We'll put all that towards the filmmaking, the journalism and everything else. What do I think of Hillary Clinton's new 501c3? It's a scam, but I'm glad for her to take their money. The more we have a Hillary Clinton, the better. I am all about Hillary Clinton taking people's money. So anytime Hillary Clinton is doing something, I totally approve. Totally approve. Mike, are you going to break a huge White House story? I just did yesterday. I can't be breaking, you know, the big stories every day, guys. If I break, here's a reasonable expectation. You, it's reasonable to expect, thank you, Super Chat. It's reasonable to expect one good White House story a month. A month. If I can break two stories about the White House a month, I will be thrilled. If I have two pretty big stories a month, dude, I will be thrilled. If I break one big story a month, I will be happy. So I will be proud of my work. I will be proud of my work if I can break one story a month. If I can break two stories or more a month, I will be like, thrilled. What story am I gonna break? It has to do with the May massacre. So the story I'm gonna break has to do with my Johnny De Stefano story. So that is, um, so I'm, I'm gonna be developing this story in more detail. The Johnny, the Johnny De Stefano story. And if what I'm waiting on happens, it'll be the biggest story of the day by far. If what I'm waiting on happens, it will be massive. It will be massive. Biggest story by far. But, I, you know, I got to wait for other pieces to move. We're all on a chessboard. I'm moving. Think about life as a never-ending succession of uh, chessboards. I'm, on, I'm right here moving pieces around on the chessboard. There are people above me and I'm their little chess piece and they're moving around. And there are people above them moving them around. That's all life is, is a never-ending chess board, ad infinitum. So I'm moving my pieces on the board, but other people are moving me on the board too. The game, though, is to try to know where they're going to move you to. The game is where are people trying to move me on the board and why. Thoughts on the genocide in South Africa? I mean, I have one of the best channels on that. I, I talked to Simon Roche about it. On Periscope, hundreds of thousands of people have watched it. So type in South Africa Genocide Cernovich and you're going to see all kinds of information. I've done a massive amount of journalism in the genocide in South Africa. How do you choose your issues? One, it has to interest me. Two, it has to interest a lot of people. So, yeah, the Simon Roche was on Molyneux you and Infowars and everywhere because I... I told them, I put them in touch with everybody. So for me to work on a story, I have to interest it. And I want it to interest a lot of people. Because otherwise, why do it? You have a diary. You gotta do both. You gotta do both. Mike, how do we the people get in the chess game? Well, you already are. Issue is you need to start moving pieces. And Thank you, Super Chat, $20. John, appreciate it. The issue is you have to go to MAGA Meetup. M-A-G-A -A Meetup. MAGA Meetup. Or MAGA Meetups, plural. You got to go there. You got to meet each other. Where will we be next year? I don't know, man. These past five months haven't been quite what they should have been. I don't know, man. I honestly don't know. Thank you, Eagle Hunting, for the super chat. George Webb, reach out. I've talked about George Webb repeatedly. George Webb needs to do a summary video that is five minutes to get people caught up. 
And then I would be glad to do a Google chat with him or um, a video with him or something, video interview. He's been doing a lot of interesting things, for sure. So yeah, I'd be happy, happy to talk to him. Definitely be happy to talk to him. Can Breitbart still be trusted? Um, the bigger question is, is Lee Stranahan somebody to trust? I don't trust Lee Stranahan at all. So that would be, that would be the bigger question is, is Lee a liberal who is really just trying to tear apart the movement? That would be the question I would be asking. He seems to cause a lot of drama, right? Amongst people like me, and he's really lied about me and attacked me a lot. Does, is attacking me gonna help? Here's a good question. Is attacking me gonna help the right or the left? That'd be my question. If people attack me, is that gonna make the right stronger or is that gonna benefit the left? That would be the real question. So when you see people who claim to be conservatives or to be on the right and they're attacking me, that's only gonna help the left. That doesn't make the right stronger. That doesn't help the, the movement improve. So I wouldn't be trusted anybody who attacks me, that's for sure, because that isn't gonna do it. Diane, thank you, Diane, appreciate it. Your copy of Gorilla Mindset arrives tomorrow. Awesome, enjoy, you're gonna love it. Oh, Jesse Lee Peterson, I need to get him on Alex Jones. Jesse Lee Peterson is doing a lot of great work. I need to get, I need to do more with him actually. I definitely need to do more with Jesse Lee Peterson, that's for sure. Have you guys heard of Jesse Lee Peterson? Great guy, just a really good man, good Christian. Good Christian, good heart. Here's him. If you haven't, he's a good, good guy. Great, great guy, Jesse Lee. So yeah, they're having some kind of event that they wanted me to speak at, and I don't think my schedule can make it, but if I can, then I'll definitely be I need, to, I need to get in touch with him. That's the thing is, you know, you get so busy that you lose touch with people. So I definitely, that is one, one of my personal weaknesses is that I lose touch with a lot of people because I get so busy and wrapped up in what I'm doing that I forget about all the great people in the world that I want to help bring up and build up and help advance them too. You know, that's definitely, you got to remember that you always got to be working to boost people up. Why? Well, it's the right thing to do, one. The two is because we're all, we live in a fallen world. We live in the falling, we live in a fallen world and we're all gonna fall again. So you better be good to people on your way up because you are gonna fall and you're gonna need them. And a lot of them won't be there for you. A lot of them won't be there for you, but a lot of them will. All right, so we got a new we got a new moderator. So I'm now there's a new subreddit called the New Right. Hashtag, no, not hashtag forward slash, the New Right. Wow, those looks kind of looks kind of cool. I'll tweet a link out to that right now. We got Jack Posobiec messaging me. Let's see if he shows up here on my my uh, computer. And now. Um, welcome to the new right on Reddit. All right. So Jack Posobiec just messaged me. Wants to know, do we got a question for Donald Trump Jr.? When will he start arresting Antifa terrorists? So Jack Posobiec is a White House correspondent and he is at the White House today apparently and he's going to try to get a question in. He'll get it in. Real, real, you know, real OG hour. Jack works hard too. Jack and I both work. That's why Jack, people are like, oh, where'd Jack come from out of nowhere? No, Jack has been grinding for a long time, dude. If you work long enough, if you work hard enough, long enough, things are going to happen for you. But people want to skip that. People want to jump right away people want to jump right away to fame they don't want to do the grind they don't want to do the grind oh so he's at a president trump press conference wow 
Poso, Jack Posobiec in the White House room. Amazing. Good job. Very happy to see people succeed. He's also a he's also a loyal person. Which is important. So another thing too, if you can prove you're a loyal person, you'll go far in life. Because in this life there aren't very many loyal people. There are not many people in this country who are loyal. What else is going on? Jason Chavez, yeah, I think TMZ has something on him. So if you notice, Jason Chavez has been doing interviews with TMZ. That's called access journalism. So my my theory is that there's something on Jason Chavez. It's either a sex scandal or a gay sex scandal. That's what and TMZ has it. That's why he's doing all those interviews with. That's why he's doing all his interviews with TMZ. Eric Gardner, 1776. The answer to 1984? 1776. Yeah, so Jason Chaffez has definitely been caught up in some kind of sex scandal. Maybe a gay a gay sex thing, you know, who knows? Not you know me, I'm not I'm not judging. May, you know, maybe too, you know, you never know. You never know. He might have an open thing that people don't know about. See, that's another thing, too. A lot of these things that are like sex scandals, a lot of them have open things, but they can't let people, you know, talk about that. So then they get caught, but really it's just like an open thing. That's why the wives stick by these people. Thanks, thanks, Nestor. Appreciate it. That's why people are like, why don't the wives leave? Because